So on today's Vast Motorsports, we're going to try to fix a flood golf cart. This is the EasyGo TXT. And it was totally submerged down here in Wachula in the RV park when the flood came through. So, I mean, it was all the way underwater, way over the roof. So everything got flooded. And when I took the cover off the controller here you can see it's in very very poor condition the batteries were hooked up um, <clears throat> the batteries actually charged up fine and they seem to be good it's been sitting for over a month now and they still have a good charge on them so I think we're okay there amazingly and I've checked most of the terminals I'm gonna have to clean them up but it didn't actually burn them uh, there were some ends um, over here that I had to, this is just for the lights, this little light switch for the headlights. But there were some wires that were fried and I pretty much fixed them and put buck connectors on them and stuff. Um, and then the ignition switch here, it's got the little meter to tell you the voltage. Well, they were just fried off. Matter of fact, one of the terminals even fried off. So I'm not real worried about it. What I did was just jumped it over here uh, straight to the actual ignition switch. So I took an ohm meter and checked the ignition switch, and it's working correctly. I think it will be okay. I think it survived. But uh, as you can see, the solenoid and all is just in such bad shape. And these wires here really bad shape even a little connector here that was plugged on the pins again in bad looking shape so this is your forward and reverse selector I took and ohmed everything out and it seems to be working but again with the contacts and all being in as bad of shape as they are I just don't trust it so yesterday I got really lucky and scored this hole assembly here the guy had uh, pretty much everything I need including the cables even going back to the motor and all so I'm very happy about that because all this in very nice shape and um, he just cut a couple wires or whatever so I took pictures ahead of time before I start unplugging all this stuff that way I can make sure I get it back together he even had this, the reverse, forward reverse selector. And again, it's in very nice shape and everything's still hooked up to the control box. So I got really lucky on that. Me being a deal finder, I don't even wanna say how cheap I got it, but trust me, it was a steal. So that way I've got all the cables and everything. And uh, because I don't even wanna use these nuts and bolts again, they're in such rough shape. So I'm about to take some tape and put it on my wires back here and go ahead and label them and that way I don't get anything crossed and mixed up because I've never done this before but of course I fix pretty much anything. So we're about to put the new or not new but new to me control box in and this was not in the flood. The guy when I went to his house he builds really nice golf carts. I mean multi-thousand dollar golf carts all jacked up and switches them over and converts them to lithium and stuff like that i mean you know the whole lithium setup on the, the batteries and all and i'm not about to spend four or five thousand on a battery and controller and motor and all that so this was a good good deal for me so i also went and grabbed a new solenoid just now at my local golf cart place so let's go ahead and get this stuff switched out see if we can get her rolling okay so I went ahead and removed the electrical stuff that I needed to and wires going back to the motor I went ahead and labeled everything that way I don't get them mixed up and we got our old assembly out with the old trashy wires and even the old uh, forward reverse switch kept everything labeled so I can track down these wires when I'm hooking up my new to me setup here 
That way I can keep everything straight and I don't get anything crossed. So let's go ahead and get this one installed. So I went ahead and laid them out on the table here. And now I'm just going to trace each one down and see what I've got them labeled at. Come over here and relabel these. And that way when I route them back to the motor, I don't get anything confused. Because again, I've never worked on one of these in my life. And I don't want to cross anything and hurt that good controller. So uh, let's go ahead and get this done. And I was just noticing this one, the terminal, it used to go here to the bottom and it's just fried off. And so when I followed it, it's coming up here, it's this first terminal. Well, that's what this wire is, coming down, coming over, and see it's still hooked up to the bottom here, so I know we're good there. Alright, so we had to leave and go take care of some stuff. And I just got back and I finished up the harness, made up the little stuff, hooked up the solenoid and all. And when I hooked up the positive lead here, I thought everything is finished, time to give it a try. And as soon as I hooked it up, the cart started going forward. And I don't even have a key in it, I don't have the gas pedal pushed. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Thankfully, I didn't have the lug tight all the way, and it was arcing like a son of a gun, so I'm glad it didn't pop anything or explode. I had a little ratchet. I went ahead and undid the bolt real, I mean the lug real quick and pulled the wire off to get it stopped. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I guess I'm going to go try to pull up some wire schematics and we'll mess again with it in the morning when I can see what's going on because it's starting to get pretty dark here. Oh well, we'll try in the morning. What is it, Jasper, huh? What are you doing, boy? So me and Jasper finally got it figured out. I needed his help, of course. So, one thing I want to mention is always make sure you stick a jack or jack stands or something under the back because i learned the hard way yesterday thank god it did start moving but it was very slow speed and it almost hit the hummer and stuff because it was parked over here in the driveway so that's not a very good thing so anyway make sure you jack it up <laughs> that's a good that's one of the best pointers i can give you so I come out last night because, of course, I just can't leave things alone. And uh, I got to thinking, and I was like, I had this red wire here jumped over onto the ignition switch. And it was actually for the meter. You know, there's also a ground right beside it. It's got a this red and black in this little harness. And then I had the blue and the green in this harness. And I got to thinking to myself, I said, self, I know that when I hook up that red wire, I've got it kind of stuffed over here now. Whenever I would hook it up by itself, that's when the arc would happen. So this is the one I owned it out. It's the one going up front there to what would have been the meter. And the ground is over here, the little one. So I'm not using the meter right now anyway. So what was happening, I was back feeding power through the ignition switch and making it try to take off. So once I unhooked that, up here and split the two to where it's making continuity going through when you turn the key on boom now everything is working we're good to go so i drove it all around the park last night and it seems to be doing fine so that's our repair and fix on a flood cart because this thing was underwater for five days minimum and uh, I can't believe even the charger over there, it's in good shape and it works and it charges the batteries. But again, like I said, I'm probably going to change the charging port because those ends are so corroded in there. But the charger itself, it's in good shape and it's working fine. Luckily, it wasn't plugged in or anything when it was in the shed and submerged. So we got the flood cart fixed. I think the only other thing I'm going to do is uh, I need to do a little wiring repair for the lights and the light switch itself it did burn out i've tried to ohm it and i've even checked you know with 12 volt on one side you pull a switch check the other terminal no voltage so that switch is going bad 
But uh, besides that, I do want to go in and go ahead and change the rear end fluid, the lube in the rear end, because I know that rear end is going to have to be full of water because the way it was submerged and it's most likely got like a little vent tube or something on the top. So, all right, I'm a happy camper because now... I picked it up cheap off a friend of ours over here at the campground and gave five for the golf cart itself. And then, like I said, me being a deal finder, I got all that used equipment off somebody for 175 So I'm in it for around 700 now because I did have to go buy the uh, solenoid at a local shop here. So, again... There's a lot of different controllers. Just make sure that you find the correct controller. Now, I could have got the controller new on eBay for around $350, $400, which still ain't too bad, but I'm cheap. I like being very cheap with stuff. And I got very lucky. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, screw the switch back up. This is not hooked up to anything anymore, so it's not going to short or anything. Let's go for a ride. for a little ride because now it's working what do you think Jasper huh what do you think yeah let's go for a ride on our flood cart that is saved yeehaw so they can be saved y'all probably still got to take the motor apart and clean it get rid of that little stuttering when you first take off but she's alive 